Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is a reductive cannabis connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and older. So today, what I want to do is do a show for moved in now what while i'm rolling some joints <laughs> cue the rolling tray <laughs> i'm gonna get ready to roll some joints with some trim um so welcome to today's show thanks for joining me i'm gonna smoke a joint first before i get into rolling joints <laughs> and talk about some really good news positive news that has come my way and um yeah it's it's nice to have a little bit of optimism in your in your life starting in the new year so get to talking about that so thanks for joining me today hope everything is going well with all of you um, as the holidays are uh, just about over <laughs> hopefully you recovered well uh, didn't didn't party too much drink too much eat too much you know it's always uh, hard to recover from the next day so, turn the music back on. Got a little music on in the background. All right, cheers. And if you don't know what trim is, trim is basically um, when you go to harvest your um, cannabis plants, the little nugs, sugary leaves. That's the trim. And sometimes there'll be stems. I set the stems aside for a very potent cannabis stem tea. And then I use the nugs and the sugary leaf to grind up for joints and to bake into like sa um, baked goods or make savory dishes with so yeah that's what trim is it's like these little tiny nugs like this Whoop. like that so yeah cheers everyone So, um, when was it? Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, I talked to um, this delivery driver for um, one of the dispensaries that I um, order cannabis from. He asked if I would um, roll joints for him, and he would pay me to roll joints. Uh, they're just cone, cone joints, you know, where you just fill them up. You know, I'm talking about the cones. You fill them up, and then you just twist them on the top. Um, and if you pay me to roll joints, and that he was going to be needing a trimmer soon, and that I could be paid to trim for him, um, and it's like, wow, this is great. <laughs> I mean, because this is the type of uh, employment that I was looking for, something that's not too taxing on my body and not too taxing on my mind, because after all these customer service jobs I've I've had to do. I feel literally drained. I still have memories of different customers, you know, and the encounters with them, and all the stress and anguish that a lot of people are going through. I felt it. Being an empath and working in customer service for me was a nightmare because I would empath all these different people's uh, lives, their emotions, their whatever was going on with them, I felt like I could, I was them. And it was very stressful working in that type of environment because of being an empath. And those who are truly an empath know what I'm talking about. Not just people saying, I'm an empath, I feel for, I have compassion for others. It goes further than that, as I've talked about before. It goes to the point where you actually are that person. You feel their aches, their pains. When they're depressed, you feel depressed. Uh, they stub their toe, it can get to that point, that deep, where if someone stubs their toe and you're that close to them, then you feel that as well. Sometimes with the, a lot of times with the empath, you don't have to be close to that person. Um, you can just feel their intense emotions as if they are your own. So, um, 
Before someone goes around calling themselves an empath, please do your homework and look it up. Don't look it up on Wikipedia. Find more reliable resources than that. <laughs> when it comes to to things of the spiritual matter, you know, don't just half-ass it with with the spirit. You can't can half-ass it. If you do, you don't get the full meaning of what it's all about. But yeah, I'm I'm really uh, happy about that getting that information. So um, he's gonna come over on Monday and stuff, and so that'll be cool. I'm really happy to be able to uh, bring in some income where I don't have to um, where I don't have to stress out so much, have panic attacks, or um, fuck up my body even more than it is. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I've been looking for if I'm gonna have employment. Other than making art, I want something that's not going to tax me, tax me the fuck out because, um, <clears throat> I've been through so much and a lot of people, not a lot of people, some people will leave comments on my videos saying, wow, you look like you've been beat up or, you know, you've been in a lot of fights or whatever. You're... It's all showing on my face what's going on in my world, in my life. So, um, and that happens to everyone. When you experience life, it shows up on your face. So that's how it is. <laughs> it's experience. That's what it is. But sometimes it can feel like you're being beat up mentally, you know, in life. You're doing the best you can and then not, not being enough. But what I've learned... And what I remind myself all the time, daily, is that we can only do what we can do, you know, and when you push past your limit, then you pay for it. You pay a big price, so, and that price that you pay could be physical, emotional, you know, but you pay a price when you push far beyond your limit, limit of what you can do. There's a reason why your body aches when you've done too much. It's telling you you've done too much. There's a reason why your head starts to ache when you're thinking too much. That means you are thinking too much. And you need to slow yourself down. And that is something that a lot of people need to tell themselves every day to slow down. If you don't slow down, you're going to get swept up in all of this drama, all of this BS, all this stuff that doesn't even matter. Yep. It becomes challenging to concentrate when you're, if you're living in an apartment complex and you're surrounded by a lot of people with different sleep schedules. Or what seems like no sleep schedule at all. <laughs> I mean, do you sleep at all? But yeah, it's it becomes more of a challenge trying to slow down. If you feel the rush of other people around you. Constantly trying to do something. And not wanting to look like you're lazy or unproductive because you're not doing anything. And that is not what's going on when you're sitting down. When you're sitting down, you're giving yourself a chance to rest completely. Or laying down even more so. <laughs> but you're giving your yourself a chance to process these things you're thinking about. And realizing that a lot of the things you're thinking about aren't really anything that should be thought about. You look at it and let it go. And move on. And if these thoughts that you're having are hard to let go and move on from, why is that? You need to sit down and write it out and meditate on each one individually. So, yep. That's how I do it. If you can't write it down, you got an audio recorder on your phone. You can record it and just play it back to yourself and really listen to what you're saying really hear hear yourself because a lot of people 
don't really hear what they're telling themselves in their mind. They're on autopilot, and they just kind of operate on what they've always operated on. And a lot of times, they're operating on self-doubt, being self-conscious all the time, doubting, yeah, doubting themselves day in and day out based on what other people think that they should be thinking about themselves and what they're doing here. So, yeah. It gets hard, for, it's, it's hard for people to know exactly what they're supposed to be doing, especially right now, because um, it's a brand new year, that's true. But a lot of people have lost their jobs, um, and they still feel like they're floating around and not knowing what they're supposed to be doing. So, um, for those people, this is what I say. <clears throat> if you can, go walk out in nature and find somewhere to sit down that's peaceful and breathe and let go of all of the bullshit that you dealt with in whatever job you're having. Breathe it out and breathe in the fresh air of nature and see a scenery that's more pleasant than what you're used to seeing. Get away. Get away somehow. I don't know where you're going to go, but get away somewhere in nature where you can be alone with your thoughts and not be influenced by others' uh, thoughts. Tune into who you are yourself. I think a lot of times people want someone else to have the answers for them all the time. But a lot of times people don't have the answers for you. The answers are within yourself. And when you look within yourself, then you really know what you're all about and what you need to work on. And when I say need to work on, I don't mean being harsh and critical of yourself because you're not there yet. I mean sitting down and really hearing yourself and what your heart desires, what you're supposed to be doing here on this planet right now. That's how you'll be able to find your passion and be able to move forward from situations like losing your job and whether you're fired or you quit, got laid off. Um, it's a whole nother transition that you're going through. And I was speaking from experience. It's a hard thing to, to get used to, to get used to like not doing a certain pattern every day, waking up to an alarm clock. I mean, I actually enjoy not waking up to alarm clock. It's awesome. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. I mean, I don't think anybody should be waking up to something that's jarring you out of your sleep. And that's what's happened to us, man. That's what happened to us. We've been programmed to wake up to some loud-ass fucking machine, if you think about it. <laughs> I use an alarm clock because how else would I wake up and get up in time? This is what I was telling myself. How else would I wake up, get up in time to go to a job I really didn't like? I've, I've worked at a lot of jobs I didn't like, and a lot of them were customer service jobs. And, uh, and waking up to an alarm clock is jarring. Nobody should have to wake up to something like that. We should be able to wake up to, you know, something gentle and pleasing and soothing, not like some loud, ah, 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 you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, what the heck, man, what's happened to us as beings on this planet, what's happened to us, when the only way we can wake up from our slumber is from some obnoxious, noisy machine, you know, <laughs> we have definitely gone backwards not forwards but you know backwards you think backwards back in the day before there were alarm clocks and all that before there was even a clock or a watch that people would wear all the time <laughs> what did we do then <laughs> things were more organic back in the day back in the days of when people lived on their land and grew their produce and you know, took their hallucinogens, <laughs> you know, did their spiritual work, you know, with all the, the magical herbs out there that are still out there. They're not, they're not gone. They're just unrecognizable to most people because we've lost 
those traditions. We've lost those uh, rituals that were done within our our community. We don't have a community. We're fractured. We're isolated, and we're told that the computer is our best friend. <laughs> Just keep buying more shit, okay? <laughs> Alright. I got two joints rolled. Ah, ah, ah. Two, two joints, one with the candy twist on top. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the good news that came forth uh, yesterday. So, uh, that'll be nice to be able to do that to make some income so that I can save money, you know, and not have to live here anymore. I really don't like living here. And anybody that says they love living here is lying their asses off. <laughs> yeah. Unless they've never lived in, in a home or a shelter of some sort before, then maybe this is, this is the best thing they've ever had, you know. Yeah, on New Year's Eve, um, everybody was getting wild around here. Um, I heard gunshots outside. I mean, I've heard gunshots out, outside before without it being a holiday, but it, they were going crazy on New Year's Eve. It was ridiculous. There was fireworks in the mix, but I did hear gunshots going off. And it's like, come on. But, you yeah. know. That's what makes this world a unique world, where you have everybody, well, <laughs> I was going to say everybody doing their own thing, but no, a lot of people are just following what, what other people are doing. He's going to bring his gun out, I'll bring my gun out. You're doing fireworks, I'm going to do fireworks too. <laughs> Do mine better. <laughs> Bigger and better fireworks every year. <laughs> so yeah, um that's what's going on in New Year's Eve here is we um we pretty much just chilled here. Didn't uh much of anything else I New Year's Day, as you saw from the video, if you watched it, I uh, did a dab, did a dab and a half. It was a nice one, really big one. Um, so feel free to check out that video if you care to, if you dare to. <laughs> Looks like the time on my phone says 18 minutes. Okay, I'll roll one more joint and then we'll come back for part two and smoke all three. <laughs> we'll see. Can I smoke all three? We'll see. <laughs> yeah. As I said, I'm not really into stunts, stunt smoking, but sometimes I do enjoy watching the stunt smokers of cannabis, not of any other smoking. So, specific people though, I, I enjoy watching, like Big Toke, um, Haley420, who else is a stunt smoker? Um, that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> I can do smoke rings. <laughs> Alright, you guys join me for part two. Um, is part three. No part three. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> I just want to take it easy today. And I thought I'd share parts of my day with you today. And that's what I'm doing with Moved In Now, this show. Um, just showing you the adjustment I had to make, the big adaption that I had to do to uh, from moving from a house to apartment life. And it is not fun at all. Alright, tune in for part two. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing, liking, and sharing my videos with your friends and family. And thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below and let me know how your New Year's is going so far. And if you want to subscribe, please do. If you'd like to donate to this channel, you can go to my Google Pay, PayPal, and Cash App. 
In exchange for your donation, I create a one-of-a-kind piece of artwork for you, or I can create a video on a topic of your choosing. So, see you in part two.